Today I'd like to share with you one of my favorite devices as of late, the Wi-Fi 232, a wireless internet modem allowing dozens of classic computers to connect to a modern Wi-Fi network. In effect, it's a peripheral that plugs into a serial port on an old computer, and that computer will see it as a serial dial-up modem, allowing you to connect to different networks online and all sorts of cool stuff. I've been messing around with this thing for days now, not because it's hard to use, but the exact opposite. It's so easy to use across such a wide variety of machines that I'm kind of addicted. Because man, as fun as old computers are to use offline, a big part of the computing experience for many users back in the day was getting online. And for a long time, that did not involve the web or ISPs, it was all about bulletin board systems or BBSs. I know that personally, my first online experience was ogling a BBS at a friend's house, sitting in awe at all the games you could download, and the colorful blocky artwork that streamed in line by line. The overall BBS experience will have its own dedicated LGR episode in the future, but to put it briefly, bulletin boards very much set the stage for the websites and online services we know today, and using them on a machine from the time period offers a truly captivating experience. Of course, in their prime, you dialed into them using a modem and a telephone line, similar to how you'd connect to the internet using dial-up. But nowadays, the most popular method of connecting to a BBS is via Telnet, a network protocol that's even older but is still easily connected to through the modern internet. While you can connect a vintage computer to a Telnet BBS using Ethernet, null modem, and even Raspberry Pi solutions, this often requires separate hardware and setup processes for each machine. Enter the Wi-Fi 232, a handy little device that plugs into an RS-232 serial port and acts as a Hayes-compatible modem wirelessly. This was put together by Mr. Paul Rickards, a tech geek of the highest caliber if his punch card business card is anything to go by. This is awesome, look at this thing. He initially made the Wi-Fi 232 to act as a wireless server for serial printers and plotters, but it soon turned into a more broad Wi-Fi serial solution. While I don't have a serial printer to test out, I do have plenty of computers with RS-232 ports to dial into a BBS. And I say dial into, even though the Wi-Fi 232 isn't exactly dialing any phone numbers and simply uses Hayes compatible AT commands to communicate. The Hayes command set was the de facto standard in modem control for years, and as a result it's supported by an absolute crap ton of vintage computers. Which means this works with IBM PC compatibles, classic Macs, TRS-80s, Apple IIs, Commodore PETs, 64s and Amigas, Atari STs, various workstations and terminals, pretty much if it has an RS-232 serial port, it's gonna work fine with the Wi-Fi 232. It does this by using the ESP8266 microcontroller to hop onto Wi-Fi networks and send out Hayes commands. And combined with the other features Paul added, it becomes one of the easiest and most compact serial Wi-Fi modems around. Setting it up is simple, with the steps being laid out quite nicely in this 13-page PDF manual you can print out. Just plug the board into a free serial port, and then power it on with a mini USB cable and charger. Once it glows blue, you can then turn on your computer, then start up your terminal emulator of choice. I'm using good old Kermit for MS-DOS in this selection of footage captured from the LGR Woodgrain 486, although I'm also fond of Bananacom and others. Regardless of what you use, you first select the COM port it's plugged into, and the modem speed, which right now is port 2 and 1200 baud. After this, you'll open the terminal itself and do the rest using the AT commands from the manual. And what's great is the process is the same regardless of the computer you're using, since you configure it using the Wi-Fi 232's built-in web server. There's an SSID command to enter your Wi-Fi network's name, and a pass command to enter the network password. Typing ATC1 will then connect to Wi-Fi at this point, and it'll remember the network either until the device is powered off, or you save the credentials to the device's onboard memory. You can also change the speed of the modem, which ranges anywhere from 300 to 115,200 baud, and check for firmware updates, which it does on its own through Wi-Fi to minimize hassle. And now you're free to choose a BBS and type in the ATDT command to connect. There are still hundreds of active boards to log into over Telnet, and the Telnet BBS Guide website is a great place to start your ANSI-flavored journey. Oh, I love this stuff, and I love the fact that this feels so authentic. Sure, you don't have the screechy modem noises since it's using Telnet, but the experience otherwise is pretty much just how I remember it, down to the speed or lack thereof. 
My first computer had a 2400 baud modem, which is what the Black Flag BBS is running with right here. This slowness leads to an exciting feeling of anticipation, seeing what the next screen would hold, watching you draw characters out line by line, and wondering what treasures were inside each coming room. Posting on message boards, checking email, downloading games, playing multi-user dungeons, it's all here and it is legit. Again, I know it's really easy to connect to these boards on a modern computer through a Telnet program, but there's something undeniably more enjoyable about doing this on an original IBM AT, or Apple II, or Commodore 64, or whatever. Not only that, but having any classic computer connected wirelessly just amuses me to no end. It somehow reintroduces that feeling of me being a kid filled with wonder at everything about computers, where it all seems like magic. And the Wi-Fi 232 is one of the most approachable, versatile, and affordable solutions to make this magical feeling happen, costing just $30 for a kit and $45 for one pre-assembled. Or at least it was, and they're sold out at the time of this video going live, so sorry about that. They weren't sold out when I started writing this episode, so that's my excuse. But hey, it looks like if there's enough demand using the form on his website, he might make some more of them in the future. And I really hope he does too, because the Wi-Fi 232 is easily one of my favorite things to screw with right now, and I'm having a blast trying it on every computer I can. So, if you'll excuse me, I have to go chat to the sysop about playing a game of Lord. And if you enjoyed this look at a thing, then you might enjoy some other looks at things. Here in LGR, there's new episodes every Monday and Friday. And as always, thank you very much for watching.